Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dante Fortson here with A Cursed Nation, America's Unrepentance. Today, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that puts America in a position where it cannot repent. I know many of you have heard these TV pastors on um, TV, really, <laughs> some some are on the Internet saying that America must repent if they don't want to be judged by God. America has to repent. America has to repent. And yet, when we look in the Bible for the guidelines for which it takes to receive um, forgiveness, we realize America does not meet those standards. Many, 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 many people in America do not meet the guidelines uh, for repentance. And I'm going to show you why today. So before I get to that, if you want to support, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Dante Fortson. For those who want to support via Cash App, you can do so with cash tag B-H-I-T-B. If you want to support via PayPal, the link is in the description. And if you want to support via Super Chat, just click the dollar sign in the chat as the premiere is going. For those that don't have it to support financially, a share and a prayer are always appreciated. So today's study is brought to you by undeniable full color evidence of black Israelites in the Bible. If you don't want to argue with anybody, you just want to show them the full color evidence. Get this book. If you want to educate yourself um, as to the history and the background of what all this is about, check out the Black Hebrew Awakening, the final 400 years as slaves in America. A lot of people love the book. You can go check out the reviews on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble as well, which is where you can pick up both of these books. And coming soon, it's available for pre-order now, Finding Edom in Search of Israel's Forgotten Enemy. So this book is something that I've been working on for a while. Um... Interesting research. Some of it you may agree with it. Some of it you may not. But for those that want to know Kindle, you can pre-order it at Amazon.com. The paperback will be out, I believe, the day of, I think, November 15th, if not the 14th. So go to Amazon.com. Check that out if you want to pre-order the Kindle version. All right. And finally, before we get to today's lesson, check out HebrewSphere.com. For those of you who are not signed up yet, Understand that it is all about us over there. You will not get banned for speaking the truth. You don't have to speak in code words. You will not be blocked for speaking the truth or being too pro-black. It just won't happen. This is our thing. So they have to come there and be respectful and follow our rules or they will be blocked or banned or um, put in jail like Facebook does. So, yeah, check out HebrewSphere.com. It's a lot of great conversations going on over there. A lot of fellowship, a lot of networking. Um, people are throwing up some interesting ideas, some very good ideas as well. And so the community is really starting to um, shape up and come together. It's not your average social network. It's not being built like your average social network. So anyway, enough of that. Check out HebrewSphere.com. All right. Go ahead. Click that thumbs up button. If you have not clicked it yet, it helps it rank higher in the search engines when people are looking for information. And if you have already done that, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future updates. And if you have clicked the subscribe button, make sure you click the notification bell and click all notifications so you will get notified when I put out new videos. You get notified instantly, I believe, or almost instant. Some people are saying that the notifications aren't getting sent, getting sent out, but I know for sure they won't get sent out if you do not click that notification bell. All right. So. Is the modern day social justice initiative of God? Now, that's a question I had to ask myself, because sometimes I like to look at um, other people's perspective from a from an objective point of view. And I see a lot of white Christians say this is not of God, that the, the modern day social justice movement is from the pits of hell. It's of the devil. It's not of God. Um, you're making it about race. Uh, races of the devil, you know, they don't see color, all these excuses. And they say America's a Christian nation. That's something else that just goes on in the background. America's a Christian nation. We hear this a lot. So is the modern day social justice initiative of God? Now, if America is a Christian nation and the social justice uh, movement is of God, then that means that Christian nations sh should support it. If it's of God and America's a not a Christian nation, that means they should not support it, right? If they're not of God and this is of God. If the social justice movement is not of God and America is a Christian nation, then America should not support it. So the burden is to prove whether or not that the social justice initiative that's currently taking place in America, if it's of God or not. 
And we're also going to take a look at America to see whether or not it is a Christian nation. Because in my opinion, if somebody calls themselves a Christian nation, they would follow what's in the Bible. And even if they made a mistake, they would do the steps it takes to repent. So let's look at something. In the Bible, it says in Exodus 22, 2, it says, ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Now, I want to focus on the fatherless child part, right? Because seeing that doesn't uh, dictate gender, male or female, a male or a female can be a fatherless child, right? So we're not going to focus so much on the widow part, but we will touch on it just a little when we come down to uh, certain parts. So ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Exodus 22, 2. So now. If you are calling yourself a Christian nation, you should want to adhere to this. Now, I can hear the Eurocentric Christian doctrine, adherence, black, white, other, all of them saying, well, we're not under the law. Now, let's say you're not under the law. Is it right or wrong to afflict widows and fatherless children? In what society do people look kindly and gratefully upon people who afflict women and children that's just not a thing in most societies where where guys and and other adults women i'm not even gonna say women because i don't know of any women that would congratulate you for beating down a woman or a child and i don't know of any guys either for that matter that that would condone that sort of behavior now when we look at the, the rates let's just look at the rates for example who has the high, highest fatherless home rate this is uh kidscount.org children and single parent families by race so you get down to here black or african-american we see that the number in 20 uh 2009 was 67 percent which is much higher than everybody else much higher than the two race uh households uh non-hispanic whites hispanic and latino asian pacific islander and american indian much higher among black or african-american and then when you get to 2018 because this is as far as this goes 65 percent still much higher as you see right here this stayed steady this didn't really fluctuate too much this stayed steady these stayed steady so what you're seeing is something is happening to keep these numbers this high 65% is extremely high. I mean, 53% is extremely high, but 65% is astronomical. 65% of the people being born to black families do not have both parents in that household. Now, a lot of that strategic, and we're going to come back to that in a minute. Um, a lot of that has been strategic through politics. And a lot of politics has people brain or have people brainwashed into believing only one party can be good and only one party can be bad and we have to accept this party or that party when in reality forget all the the circus shenanigans forget all the sideshow stuff the stuff they're putting out on tv look at the policies forget the circus show look at the policies what policies are being written that would lead to a result of 65 percent fatherless home rates among black or African Americans. And we're going to look at some of those policies because right now is the time to learn this stuff, not after the election, but before the election. So now, why does America afflict the fatherless? Why? You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. That's Exodus 22, 2. So we just read. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. That's Deuteronomy 24, 7. So if the Bible says this, why is America still choosing to afflict the fatherless? Would a Christian nation do that? Cursed. Cursed be he that per perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow. And all the people shall say amen. Deuteronomy 27, 19. So now we see in the Bible there's a curse. On those that pervert the judgment of the stranger, the fatherless and the widow. So now when you see these stories about corrupt judges and corrupt cops and all these other people who play a role in the corrupt justice system in America, we see that there is a curse pronounced on them. Curse. <laughs> That's the opposite of a blessing. These people are cursed. So now how is it that cursed people 
are saying America needs to repent and yet they are not changing their ways. To repent means to turn away from. It means to not do that thing continuously. And yet America does not want to repent for what is done because it would admit that they have done wrong by black people here in America, by Native Americans. They have done wrong by Mexicans who inhabited North America before they were ran out by Europeans and murdered by Europeans. So we see that America is not going to repent. America is a cursed nation. Now, some people say, well, you're taking it out of context. It doesn't mean the whole nation is cursed. Just those people who did this stuff, they're cursed. We didn't we didn't own slaves. We didn't take any part in writing these laws or afflicting people. OK, and that's true. Many of you did not take part in owning slaves. None of you that are alive today have owned any slaves, to my knowledge. Now, with that said, people know that there's the, the you know, random radical who kidnaps somebody and turns them into a slave. But we'll say on a whole. Everybody alive today has not owned a slave, and I can't say everybody alive today has not been a slave. We're going to come back to that. So we'll hear this over and over and over again. We didn't own slaves. Uh, we shouldn't have to pay for something that happened in the past. So let's let's continue to see what the Bible says. Why does America create oppressive laws? Let me... um. Let me back up real quick because I forgot to read this verses right here on numbers. So the book of numbers, chapter 35, 29 through 34. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death and ye shall take no satisfaction for him that has fled to the city of refuge that he should come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood it defileth the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that shed it defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit wherein I dwell for I the Lord dwell among the children of Israel all right, there's a lot to unpack there, but I'm not going to unpack everything. Basically, if somebody murders somebody, the murderer is supposed to be put to death because the land is polluted. And the only way to cleanse the land is by that murderer to be expelled from society, excommunicated basically from society because they had cities of refuge they were supposed to build. They were supposed to be expelled from society, sent to those cities of refuge until the high priest died. They couldn't come back till the high priest died. If the high priest outlived the murderer, the murderer could never come back. Or the other option was to kill the murderer to cleanse the land. Now, you think about how many people America has killed. They murdered people. When they came here, they murdered natives. They kidnapped Israelites from the western coast of Africa and murdered Israelites. And we saw no justice and we still see it happening. We still see happening. And then it says one witness shall not cause a person to be put to death. And yet we see it on video where there are millions upon millions of witnesses watching it over and over and over again. And they let them walk away. They don't expel them from society because there's no high priest in place. And they don't exercise the death penalty because these people have a certain job title. So. Ask yourself, if America was a Christian nation, would it allow these things to go on contrary to the Bible? If America wants to repent, America has to remedy all this. And I know some of you are going to say, well, we're not under the Old Testament anymore. We're going to address that, too. So why does America create oppressive laws? Mostly for I'm going to use the word people of color. I don't like to use that word, but in this sense, it is for people of color, Arabs. Um, you have natives, you have black people, of course, and you have people of Spanish or Latin descent. I'm talking about darker skinned people. There seems to be a different set of laws for darker skinned people than there are for people who are not dark skinned. So here 
in the Bible, again, if America's a Christian nation, why can't we look to the Bible and say, okay, look, America is doing what this Bible says. America must be a Christian nation. And then why can't we look to the Eurocentric Christian church and see them condemning America when America does not follow the Bible if America is a Christian nation? Instead, we see Eurocentric Christians joining along in the unbiblical behavior and even going out of their way to break certain laws of the Bible. So ask yourself, if Christ came to redeem mankind, he came to redeem mankind because according to the law, um, sin had to be redeemed through the shedding of blood. I mean, sin, sin, it took the shedding of blood to forgive the sin, to forgive sin. So Christ came as the final sacrifice. Now, why is it do, that the Eurocentric Christian church teaches that because Christ came to die for the sacrifice, we can now pretty much blatantly go to the Old Testament, find every single rule and break it as much as we want to. It doesn't make sense. So now Isaiah 10, one through two says, woe unto them or misery. Uh, woe means misery unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. So we saw a curse. Now we're seeing misery being wished upon these people. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousness, which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Now, when we talk about robbing the fatherless and widows being their prey. Now, I find something interesting about the bail system. They put poor people in jail. And then they charge those poor people to get out of jail before those poor people are convicted of the crime. How is it that you have laws that deprive people of their freedom before conviction and then you force them to pay to regain their freedom all before they are convicted of a crime? But understand this, there's a difference between a white collar crime and a blue collar crime. Blue, blue collar crimes are crimes black people are more likely to commit. Poor people are more likely to commit. White collar crimes are different. For example, if you ever watched the movie War Dogs, you see that they got over $300 million and combined, I think they did less than three years in prison. Those two guys, less than three years in prison. One guy did 18 months. One guy got released early on uh, good behavior. Now, over $300 million they did less than three years combined. And yet, if somebody who looks like you or me puts a gun in somebody's face and takes a hundred dollars, they will get 10, 15 or 20 years in prison. Because there's a difference. If you get arrested for a blue collar crime, you will be put in handcuffs and put in a jail. If you are accused of a white collar crime, you can do what's called a walkthrough. Where you just check in, do your fingerprints, do all the other stuff and you check out. See, there's different crimes based on who's more likely to commit that crime or different um, different laws for based on who's based on who's more likely to commit that crime. So now let me read this in a different translation, because I know some people are um, not as learned in the King James as they would like to be. So let's read this in a different translation. Woe to those who make unjust laws to those who issue oppressive decrees to deprive the poor of the rights of. And withhold justice from the oppressed of my people, making widows their prey and robbing the fatherless. So misery or woe to those who write these unjust laws and who op issue oppressive decrees. Do we see that happen in America? So when people say this social justice movement, it, movement isn't of God, either they haven't read the Bible or they believe that. Because this stuff is found in the Old Testament that God no longer cares about social justice. He no longer cares how you treat people. He no longer cares if you love your neighbors yourself. But then if you say that, you run into the New Testament and then you're stepping on Christ's toes. See, Christ said, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you can fulfill the whole of the law. Now, even though this is found in the prophets, we see what God has to say about those people who write unjust laws. And they know they write these laws unjustly. Vagrancy laws unjust law go do some research on the vagrancy laws if you don't know what they are <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so 
should drink more water before this. My mouth always gets dry when I'm doing these um studies. Leviticus 6, 1 through 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep or in fellowship or in a thing taken away by violence or hath deceived his neighbor or have found that which was lost and lieth concerning it and sweareth falsely in any of all these that a man doeth sinning therein then it shall be because he hath sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took away violently or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten or that which was delivered to him delivered him to keep or the lost thing which he found or all that about he I'm sorry <laughs> or all that about which he hath sworn falsely he shall even restore it in the principle and shall add the fifth part more there thereto and give it to him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering so now this is the trespass offering this is the Lord speaking unto Moses he says if you're coming to make a trespass offering the, the offering for you know an offense against someone and you have now in order for this for the trespass offering to be received if they have found something wait, let me back up in verse 2 it says if you sin and commit a trespass against the Lord they said this is a trespass against the Lord to lie to your neighbor about something that your neighbor was giving you to keep or in fellowship. So if your neighbor gives you something to keep, say a diamond ring, and you say, oh, well, I don't know. Somebody broke in and stole it or I lost it or, you know, anything like that. And you know that didn't happen and you try to keep that. You are trespassing against the Lord, sinning against the Lord. It says, or in a thing taken away by violence, when you forcefully, if you rob somebody and you have their possession, or you've deceived your neighbor, like I said, you're, you're lying to your neighbor to make them think that you don't have it. It says, or you found it, that which was lost and lieth concerning it and swear falsely. So if you find something and you lie about having it and you, you I put that on my mama, or I put that on my kids or I put that on this or that. You know, people, you know how our people talk and you're lying. You are sinning against God. So now. The trespass offering or the offering won't be accepted right so now if we apply that to christ why would christ suddenly say you know what i saw you steal all that stuff but you can keep it and i'm gonna forgive you that's not how this works see the law is put there as it says as a schoolmaster and yesterday if you remember the study from yesterday what did paul say in romans chapter 11 if you continue in goodness if you continue in goodness, you can't do this evil and then think that you are forgiven and you get to you get to do evil, keep the property, keep everything you stole. And then it's cool. No, that's not how it works. It says. Then it shall be because he hath sinned and is guilty and he that he shall restore that which he took violently away. So when the, when the Europeans came here and took the land from the natives violently through force in order for them to repent they have to give back everything they took this is according to leviticus right here in the book now if america is a christian nation they shouldn't have a problem following this book because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently away or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten so when they when you go through and you read how they trick them into giving up their land for dollars and 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 all kind of other ridiculous stuff they have to give that back because it was under deceit how they acquired it or that which was delivered him to keep or the lost thing which he found. So when America <laughs> cleared the land of all its inhabitants, then they went, you know, oh, well, this is my gold mine over here and this is my oil reserve over here. And they started stealing that stuff from these people. Now, the part or that which was delivered him to keep. When you pat when you see these inheritances passed down from generation to generation, it does not relieve them from the responsibility, which goes back to what I said about people saying, well, I never owned a slave, so I'm not responsible. Yeah, but if somebody down the line of your family owned a slave and they passed that land down to you, that stolen property was delivered to you to keep. And according to the Bible, you have to restore that.
And that's the part a lot of these Europeans don't want to hear. And I, I suspect that is a major part of the book of Revelation when it says they don't repent because they don't want to give back what was taken. They feel that that is theirs and that is that is rightfully theirs and nobody's entitled to it because they didn't do it. And it happened generations ago. So everybody should just get over it. As Tao Ministry said before in one of their studies, if you steal his bike and several generations, you pass it down several generations. It's still his bike that was stolen. You don't just get to keep the bike if he wants his bike back. And we see that that's what's going on in America. So now. It also says Leviticus chapter six, verse six, and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord. This is after he makes restitution and restores everything that was taken or passed on or whatever. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he had done in trespassing therein. So in order to be forgiven under the Old Testament, you had to make things right. You had to repent. You had to fix the problem and then come to God. With your offering for forgiveness. So in the New Testament, we see the church, they teach that you must repent. You must repent. Well, how do you repent if you're keeping a stolen property? If that's the case. Why not just wait till we all knock off a bank, get millions of dollars and then go repent, keep the millions of dollars and we're all good. Right. Now, see, they wouldn't agree with that. And yet they believe that they should be able to benefit from the theft, the lies, the murder, the rapes, the enslavements of their forefathers and not make it right. And yet they still think that they were be forgiven, be forgiven. How's that possible? Now, let's talk about the 94 crime bill. And the reason I want to talk about the 94 crime bill, because it has a huge impact on America. And one of the things going on right now is politics. And many of you know, I, I post on Facebook about politics all the time. And my problem is with black Democrats mostly. Why? Because black Democrats are our people. And why? Because our people mostly vote Democrat for those who vote the majority vote Democrat. So I'm not wasting my time trying to get a small percentage of people to stop voting Republican or to see open their eyes about um, what the Republicans do. That's not the goal. The other thing is truth. If you're not a brainwashed person, you can step back and objectively look at things based on not party, but by action. What I mean is, for example, if you're going to call Trump a racist for something he says, you can't then make excuses for Biden when Biden also says something racist. You have to judge fairly because the Bible says an unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. So if you're judging differently based on party, that judgment is an abomination. So now if we look at the 94 crime bill and we look at what happened, we can directly tie this into America continuing to oppress the poor, the fatherless, the widow, everybody, especially black people. And the 94 crime bill, another issue I have is that a lot of black Democrats say, well, that was forever ago, but it hasn't been changed. It hasn't been fixed. It hasn't been remedied. They had eight years with Obama and Biden. Part of those eight years, I think it was two years, they had control of the House and the Senate. They could have pushed through the crime bill. When Trump got in, Trump executive ordered a ton of stuff. We didn't see Obama do the same thing. He could have fixed this crime bill and yet they didn't want to fix it. And I'm going to show you some things. Why some things you probably haven't considered. Many of you might have, you know, considered it, but the majority probably have not considered what the bigger effect is because everybody talks about the fact that over 2 million black people have been in prison because of this, the disparage disparages between disparities between Coke and, um, crack cocaine where black people were more likely to be in possession of crack. And so we got mandatory prison time versus a white person who may be more likely to be in possession of powder cocaine got basically a slap on the wrist and the laws were written that way intentionally to drive mass incarceration fueled by the bodies of black men and women. So now let's look at this 2 million plus black people were imprisoned and Joe Biden had a direct hand in this Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Trump supported it as well. Let's not forget 
Trump was supportive of Democrat policies up until 2016 when he ran as a Republican. So when people are saying, well, Trump has been racist since the 70s. Well, Trump and Biden and them were all together. Birds of a feather flock together. You could tell me, I always say, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. They were all together. They were all supporting this uh, 94 crime bill, mass incarceration. Trump was giving money to Hillary's campaigns. They were all hanging out together. Nobody had a problem with Trump's racism. At the same time, Trump was denying black people the right to move to the suburbs. Biden was voting against black people being bussed in and integrated to uh, white schools. He was calling integration a racial jungle. So let's not act like all these people aren't one in the same. Now, the 94 uh, crime bill also ended Pell Grants for people in prison. So the number of black people graduating with degrees dropped from 14. Well, the number of uh, people in prison, we'll say it's not just black people. Uh, the number of people in prison graduating with degrees dropped from 14 percent to 7 percent at the state level. That was in 2004 and 19 percent to 2000. I'm sorry, 19 percent to 10 percent at the federal level in 2004. So they decreased it by almost half. So now you don't just have people getting out of prison. You have people getting out of prison uneducated, being left behind because they're getting these extra long prison sentences. This is stuff that the Democrats did. The Democrats did this with the help of the Congressional Black Caucus. Now, people say, well, the Congressional Black Caucus did it, so you can't just blame it on the Democrats. Well, there's always sellouts. But then there's always people who got tricked, too. Because, see, the thing is, I don't believe they were all sellouts. I believe there were sellouts among the group, but I also believe that there were people that were duped because a lot of our people don't want to do the research. They get offended. They say, well, this is my party. I don't want to hear nothing bad about them. I don't want to hear what they did. And they put their head in the sand. So now with these Pell Grants stripped, black people leave prison uneducated. They have a felony record, which makes it hard for them to get employment. It makes it easier for them to get killed by police. Just the other day, a black guy on my timeline, I wish I could remember his name off the top of my head because I hadn't even planned to talk about him. He said, well, he was a felon when we were talking about um, the kid that got shot in the back seven times. He said, well, he was a felon. As if that word means something. Martha Stewart's a felon. And the reason she's a felon is because she acted on insider information when it had to do with stocks. Like <laughs> and she's a felon. So if we're going to say that that word generically, he's a felon then by that same logic, that would mean that if Martha Stewart turned around and ran from a cop, the cop should gun her down in the back seven times because she's a felon, even though she's a nonviolent felon. And yet we don't see that happening. So it's an excuse for them to gun down, gun down our men and women after they leave prison. They have a tougher time getting work. They can't get uh, federal student aid in most cases if they're arrested on a drug charge which means they have to pay for college out of pocket if they want to be educated. And again, if they have to work for somebody, then they need the education. If they don't want to work it for anybody, they need good credit or they need cash. And oftentimes they're not going to have good credit because they were in prison. Now, on top of that, their voting rights get stripped. Everybody talks about redlining and voter suppression among the Republicans. Nobody talks about this 94 Democrat crime bill also being massive voter suppression over two million black votes permanently suppressed because they have felony records. And many people don't know how to get that stuff expunged or erased or sealed from their records. And so their voting rights have been permanently stripped. It's not automatic. Don't think it just falls off after seven years like credit. You have to go through a process. You have to have money to pay for a lawyer to go through the process in some cases, unless you want to educate yourself and do it yourself. But the Democrats did strip the voting rights of over two million black people in one go with that 94 crime bill. And it's still stripping rights from people. Now, all of this combined likely results in lifelong poverty or reoffense, because if it's hard to get a job and you can't get educated to get a job and you don't have good credit or you don't have resources to start your own business. You have to scrape by doing what you can do to stay out of trouble, which means you're probably going to live in poverty unless you find a way out or you're likely going to reoffend and end up back in the prison system. This is what the Democrats did. And so the arrest rate and the um, murder rate among black men is higher than others. And so this leads to no black fathers in the house, which you see at that 65 percent rate because the men are getting killed or they're in prison or We'll talk about that later. The hip hop music where the women 
are degraded in most circumstances and not just by the men the women degrade the women too if you listen to young ma she she degrades women a lot and yet we we don't hear them talking about that why because she's part of the lgbtq community something the democrats support so you won't see a lot of flack coming um you won't see the the women who degrade women getting a lot of flack uh we're not even gonna get into the the new song the wap cardi uh cardi b and megan stallion yeah we're not gonna get into that but yeah point being (laughs) hip-hop music is very 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 detrimental to our community so i don't want to get sidetracked into all this so back to the democrats Uh, we'll we'll probably touch on hip-hop music Um, I'll come back to that probably a later date. I'll just do a a whole thing on hip hop music. And no, I'm not going to accuse any specific people and as you know, being in the Illuminati. So, yeah, our people get out of prison. They're likely result in lifelong poverty or reoffense. You couple that with the music going on, the the disrespect of the women, the fatherless homes. um, Crime is praised in the music. Going to prison is praised in the music. And you have to wonder, was all this systematic? And I believe it was. I believe it was 100 percent intentional, no matter what they say, when they say, well, they didn't know they didn't know. Yes, they did. They had the the biggest experts in the world working on this bill saying, hey, this is what we need. This is going to stop crime. This is going to this is going to fix your neighborhoods. And then they started locking everybody up. That's how they fixed the neighborhoods. <laughs> yeah, I guess you would take the crime rate down if you take all the people out of the neighborhoods. So let's let's talk about Christ and pure religion. So what did Christ say? Because I know a lot of people say, well, you've just been coming from the Old Testament and we we believe the New Testament. A lot of a lot of people who are identifying as Christian believe the New Testament is the only relevant thing. So let's look at what Christ has to say about social justice and what's going on in the world today, because a lot of this stuff is still applicable. This is coming from Matthew, chapter 25, verse 32 through 40. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats and he shall say he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then shall the king say unto them on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepare for you from the foundation of the world for i was a hungered and ye gave me meat i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me i was sick and ye visited me i was in prison and ye came unto me Now, we see people of all races feeding the hungry, but America as a whole, if we look at politics, how often are they trying to take aim at food stamps? Why are they trying to take aim at people's food? Says, I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Do we see see America taking in strangers and yet they called us a Christian nation? How can they repent? Well, let me get, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> we, they're not taking in strangers. They're always trying to snatch people's food away. What happened to Meals on Wheels? Didn't they defund that? I, I need to follow up on that and see. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. They're putting people in prison. They're not, <laughs> they're not visiting people in prison. They're putting people into prisons. Then shall the righteous, the righteous answer him. Remember, if you continue in goodness. So these people aren't doing any of this. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. The least, the last. We keep talking about it comes up a lot. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. Who is the least? Who is the poorest people? Right now. Around America, the poorest people are black people. Not all black people are poor, but the poorest people as a whole by group are black people. The highest incarcerated. The most over policed. We see that all of this stuff fits a certain people. And we see another group of people who intentionally, it's not by accident, they intentionally oppress and do everything to black people in opposition of what scripture says we should be treated. And the scripture doesn't say, hey, treat black people this way. 
the scripture tells you specifics. And when we look at the condition of black people, it just so happens that we fit that. And again, I'm saying that sarcastically. I don't believe in coincidence at all. I believe that this book is pointing people. It's giving you a guide uh, kind of like when you do a, a scavenger hunt or uh, when you have a, um, a decoder ring. The Bible is like that, where it points to a certain group of people and it drops you clues. Hey, those people over there, the fatherless people, the widows, the ones in prison, the, the oppressed ones. And it's dropping hint after hint after hint to who the people are and saying, hey, treat them this way. This is why. And then it goes on to say about the goats. The goats did not do these things and the goats get sent to everlasting fire. So now <clears throat> James 127 pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's pure religion. So now if anybody's going to argue with you, point them to the book of Matthew chapter 25 verses 32 through 40. I'm um, actually can go further than that because it gets to the goats afterwards. Um, then you want to go to James 127 pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, let's look at some of these words right here, because we see the fatherless theme come up again and again and again came up throughout the Old Testament. As I showed you, now it comes up again in the New Testament. James 127. We're going to look at two words, pure and undefiled. 2513 and 283, pure and undefiled. And I'm going to put this together at the end. So if if it's hard keeping up right now, I'm going a, I'm to a, you know, bring it back around. So, katharos, clean, pure, unstained, either literally or ceremonially or spiritually, guiltless, innocent, upright. 283, undefiled untainted free from contamination so that's pure and undefiled visit the orphans it tells you to visit those visit look upon oh let me i'm sorry let me back up um there's gonna be word 1980 right here visit and 37 37 the orphans so visit look upon look out or select or or to keep an eye on look up to look upon or after to inspect examine with the eyes go look after those people take care of those people lay eyes on those people make sure they're doing okay the orphans the bereaved the orphans the fatherless the desolate the fatherless there's that term the fatherless or phanos says go look after these people take care of these people is that what they're doing here in america is that what they're doing at all it's a simple yes or no it's not based on party it's based on actions it says in their affliction so now in their affliction let me go ahead and um it's actually tribulation i can't <laughs> i can't pronounce this word so i'm not going to try i was going to try but i'm not 2347 persecution affliction distress tribulation are black people being persecuted are black people being afflicted or distressed? Are we in the middle of tribulation? Now, many in the white church don't want to say so. They don't want to admit that there is something going on. But we all know that that's what's happening. And we all know that by their treatment of, the, of us, according to Matthew 25, they are not going to meet the standard. They are going to end up with the goats to keep himself unspotted. And that's going to be number 784. I'm not going to try to pronounce that uh, word either. It's right here, unstained. And again, like I said, I'm going to put all this together because I know it's a lot of words to absorb. Unstained, undefiled, spotless, or pure. So right here, the Bible is all about social justice. So when people say social justice is not of God, it's from the devil. We've seen over and over and over again how God says, look, this is how you're supposed to uh, treat these people. And you're cursed if you write laws to oppress these people. But we see here it says pure religion is James 127 pure, clean, unstained, guiltless religion and undefiled, untainted, free from contamination before God. And the father is this to visit, look upon, look out for the fatherless and widows in their affliction, persecution, distress, tribulation, and to keep himself unspotted, unstained, pure from the world. Ask yourself, does America do that? 
does America do any of that for the people it has oppressed and stolen from and then taken what they've stolen and passed it down? This is why the call for reparations is so big now. This is why so many of us don't want to vote Democrat now. Because we see the oppression, we see it coming from that party more so than the other party. Not that the other party doesn't do it, it's more so from the Democrat party because what the Democrat does is they pretend to be our friend and then they get in office and they write uh, laws that blatantly affect the black community and then they say, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't know. Because see, I didn't get into the 96 welfare reform which after the crime bill stripped all the fathers out of the home, they did welfare reform so that now 1.5 million fatherless black families were driven into poverty because they no longer um, they no longer met the requirements to be approved for federal aid or even state aid. So it was systematic what the Democrats did to the black community. This is why the wealth gap is so wide now and we can pin it down to specific laws that come down to specific parties. And so this isn't the, the study I promised you on the Democrats. I'm, I'll probably touch on the Democratic National Convention tomorrow, possibly not sure. But understand that there is a war going on right now. There's a war going on. There is a spiritual warfare and then there's a physical warfare. The spirit realm, Satan hates God's chosen. And that is manifested into the physical realm into what we call racism. And so we're seeing right now that the Democrats are trying to play upon that racism. They're, hey, the Republicans are racist. Believe they're racist. Vote for us. The Republicans are racist. They're vote for us. Joe Biden makes a racist comment. Uh, but he gets a pass because he's a Democrat. The Republicans are racist. Focus on that. And then it keeps going and going and going. And then the cycle repeats itself. And then on the other side, we have the, the white Christian saying the Bible, the Bible isn't about social justice, social justice of the devil. And so that's on the Republican side. So we have one group of people that believe that us fighting for equal rights is the devil. And another group of people pretend, pretending to be on our side and we'll get in the back rooms and write laws to further oppress us. This is why we need to come away from Babylon. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. And I believe that at some point it will be physical. But I believe right now, spiritually and mentally, many of us need to come out of Babylon. We need to stop looking for white saviors among the Democrats and the Republicans. And we need to focus on the Most High and the Messiah. Remember, that was what originally got the people in trouble. They wanted a king. And the Most High was supposed to be their king, but they wanted a human king like the other nations. And so I believe that's what many of us are searching for when we go about voting and defending these parties. And neither party is for us. I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. This was in Texas. I don't know if you guys remember this, when the white cops were walking the black man um, through the street. And <laughs> on in one case, it's it's kind of. It's kind of crazy because of the the media attention that it got and then it just kind of faded away. But if you look at it again, if you try to look at things from perspective, I think it was very, very, very insensitive of them. But if you're a, a, a horse cop, I don't know what they call them. If you're a horse cop, wh where do you put a suspect if you arrest them? Do you call for a car? Like, I don't know the procedure that you guys are welcome to comment. I honestly do not know, because here in Vegas, when you see cops on horseback, it's honestly like usually on the strip and I've never seen them arrest anybody. People are posing with the horse, taking pictures and all kind of stuff like that. It looks like a publicity stunt, but I don't know if you live in Texas. What did, what did, what's the protocol? How do they get a person they've arrested from one location to another? If they're a cop on horseback. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I still think it, it, this is an interesting uh, verse. I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. We see this going on here. Judgment is definitely coming to America, though. It doesn't matter how many times these Eurocentric Christian preachers tell you that America has to repent or it's over. America can't repent because on one hand, those Eurocentric Christian teachers understand that they need to repent. But on the other hand, they don't want to make restitution. They don't want to pay reparations. They don't want to give the land back. They don't want to do anything it takes to truly repent and receive forgiveness. And so because their heart is not right. Is there a chance for them to, to, to repent? Will they be saved? I don't know. I can't speak for that. <clears throat> but I do know America uh, judgment is coming to America. We see all this stuff happening. We see COVID. We see um, the plagues, 
the um, present on the earth. We see the locust. We see the murder hornets. We see people being released from prison. I mean, we see all kind of stuff going on, and that's for another time. But Europeans took this nation through murder, deception, theft, and passing down stolen land for generations. How can you say this is a Christian nation or a nation blessed by God when it was built on misery and tragedy of multiple peoples? Murder, deception, theft, passing down stolen land for generations. And the Bible says they have to give that back and they won't. Read the book of Revelation. What did the people do? He gave them space to repent and they refused. Europeans built America's economic status on the backs of Israelite slaves. And they don't want to pay restitution for that, even though they violated every indentured servitude law, according to the Bible, because the Bible didn't preach indefinite slavery. The slaves had to be released on the seventh year. And if a slave wanted to be in, enslaved indefinitely, that slave had to voluntarily pledge himself to the master. The wife and kids had to be let go unless he got them from the master. And if he wanted to stay with his wife and kids, he could pledge himself so he could stay with his wife and kids. But what America did was nothing like that. They split up homes. They split people apart and they they beat the language out of people and they raped the women and they raped the men and they raped the children and they murdered infants. And they they did the most horrible things you could think of. And they still have the audacity to say that they do not order uh, owe reparations for all that damage. And then when they do talk about it, it's pennies on the dollar or let's not give them let's not give them money. Let's give them free college. Like what, what is free college going to do? If I don't want to work for anybody, free college does nothing for me. If somebody's already went to college and incurred the debt, free college does nothing for them. You can wipe out their debts, but then people who didn't go to college and they don't have any college debt, how does that benefit them? Or they want to throw everybody else in. Joe Biden suggested that we throw Native Americans in with our reparations. Or Kamala Harris says she's not going to do anything to just benefit us. This is what I mean about taking off the blinders and coming away from the parties. If you listen to what these people say, they're, they're 100% telling you that they don't care about black people if somebody tells you they're not going to do anything for you don't say oh we're going to vote them in and then we're going to hold them accountable how how are you going to hold them accountable what are you going to do to hold them accountable what say stuff tell you're not going to vote for them the next four years around the next time around what are you going to do say oh well the republicans are racist we got to vote democrat does it, i mean it's the same thing over and over and over and over again europeans continue to write laws to oppress the fatherless. We know that they we know that a lot of these laws, the tax laws, the the um, opportunity zones and these other things, they continue to oppress us. Uh, gentrification where they come in and buy our neighborhoods and then they get a tax benefit and then they kick us out of our neighborhoods and raise the prices so high that we can't afford to live there. We see this stuff is systematic. Euro, the Eurocentric Christian church continues to make excuses and find ways to justify what is clearly evil to true followers of Christ. If you see a man get murdered in the street when a cop leans on his neck for eight minutes and was a 47 seconds. And you see the man is not resisting and they're starting to say, well, he shouldn't have resisted. I didn't see him resisting. They had him held down to the ground. He was trying to breathe. And yet they think they're going to stand before God and be forgiven for these positions that they take against his people. This, this is to me what's baffling about the Christian church and they think that America can repent and they don't have to make any of this right. And that's just not the case. So coming up soon, we got some more stuff coming. Grace in the Old Testament. The law of Moses in the New Testament, we're going to break those down because people say the law is completely done away with. People say that, well, if you if you're not following the law, you're teaching lawlessness. That's not true either. Um, the law cannot save you. Grace saves. However, for those that don't want to disrespect God, you yes, you try to follow the law as closely as possible, not because you think it's going to save you, but because one, the dietary laws, number one, we know keep us healthier than eating pork and all the other crazy stuff that we like to eat. And number two, all the other laws about common decency. If you're loving your neighbors yourself, like Christ said, you're not trying to steal from your neighbor. You're not trying to commit adultery with your neighbor's right wife. You're not trying to figure out how to scam him out of his possessions. You're not doing none of that crazy stuff. So, no, there is nothing long wrong with following the law. And you have to wonder why people who claim to be Christians and believe the Bible and love the Lord hate when we say, hey, do these things that God said and they just lose it. <laughs> they completely lose it. I don't want to do what God said because I don't have to. 
I got grace. I don't have to do none of it. I can go have sex with my neighbor's wife. I can go uh, sleep with animals and, you know, whatever else they want to do because of grace. And this is was they abuse grace. So we're going to talk about social justice in the Bible, which we just did. So I'm going to cross that out on the next one. Um, Paul versus James, faith without works. We're going to talk about that. Some people say they contradict. Some people see how they line up perfectly. We're going to talk about both of those views. Female angels and goddesses in the Bible. This is one of those subjects that's kind of taboo to people. And I know a lot of people have questions. I've received them. So we're going to cover it. Then we're going to talk. We're going to start the spiritual warfare study on angels, demons. Um, well, technically, the the female spirits is going to fall into the angels and goddesses in the Bible. Uh, female spirits that will all be covered in one. And we already did God's warning to the church concerning Israel. And then Lion Like Men of Moab, Nephilim Giants Part 4. I know a lot of you have been waiting for a while for that, so I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. The Gentile Conspiracy, Unmasking Gentiles Part 5. I'm going to go ahead and get to that as well. Actually, I told you guys before that I bumped into a bit of research that I wanted to chase down, so I did get <laughs> distracted <laughs> chasing rabbits. So I, I'm going to go ahead and finish that one up as well. So anyway, if you're not already gone to Hebrewsphere.com and signed up, make sure you do that. Make sure you check it out. It's a majority black social network. Everybody is welcomed, whether you're black or not. You are welcome to come. Just respect the house. You are in our house. If you choose to participate, just understand that we are not in your house. You are in our house. Hebrewsphere.com. Everybody's welcome. Take your shoes off at the door. And if you've not already hit them thumbs up, please do so. Click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. All notifications if you've not already done so, so you don't miss any future studies. So with that said, till next time, I'm out.